All right, so we are continuing in section 3.2. Um, last Friday, we talked about the substitution method. And what was the method we had before that? Graphing, right? We said that one wasn't as convenient. So, so far, we've had the graphing or looking at tables. Um, and then we looked at substitution method. This is the third method called um, elimination. Some books refer to it as linear combination, OK? We are basically going to still be solving those systems of linear equations, but now with a different method. Our steps. It says identify the variable that has opposite coefficients in both equations. You may need to use multiplication to create opposite coefficients. What do we mean by opposites? So positive 1, negative 1, right? What happens when you add opposites together? They cancel each other out. That's our goal. We want to get one of the variables to be opposite so that when we add the equations together, they disappear. All right? So first step is to get those opposites. Second step is we're going to add the two equations together so a variable will drop out. We can solve for the remaining variable. And then it's back to that same process we had for substitution. Once we know the first variable, we can substitute it back in to get our second one. Okay? So it's just the first couple steps that are going to be a little different. In our first example, do we have a variable where we have opposite coefficients? Yes. Yeah. So we can simply add these two together. The x's are going to drop out. We're going to end up with 3y equaling 30. So then y would have to be 10. Okay? And now that we know that first variable, we can substitute it back in. To either one, I chose the top one, why? It's got a plain y, right? It's a little easier. Dumping a 10 in there, we've got 3x plus 10 equals 19. Subtracting 10 and dividing. How do we record our answer now? Yeah, we want it as an ordered pair. All right, so solution would be 3 comma 10 in that order, x first, y second. Could we check it? Sure, we can dump them back in. Remember, you always have to check them in the original equations. So if we put a 3 in here and a 10 in here, does it work? Yes. yes? Okay. If we put a 3 in here and a 10 in here, we get negative 9 plus 20. That would be 11. All right, so since it works in both, we know it's the solution. You always have to check both because you're trying to find that point that they share, right? It has to be a point common to both equations. Graphically, we're looking for that point where the two lines intersect, right? So if you are going to check them, it makes sense to check them in both. Um, am I going to require that you check every answer in your homework? We talked about this last week. No. But if this was a test question, would I take the time to jump them back in and make sure it's really right? Absolutely. All right, our second example, do we have opposite coefficients? Yes. This time our opposites are for our y's. It doesn't matter which variable drops out first. We just need one to drop out. So our y's disappear when we add these two together. We end up with 3x equaling 12, which means x would have to be 4. Now, we can plug it into either equation. I'm going to dump it in the top one again. Two times, ne sorry, negative two times four would be negative eight plus eight y equals negative eight. If I add eight to the other side here, what happens? Now, a lot of kids say there's no solution here, but you can take zero and divide by eight. You just get zero. So. My y-coordinate is 0, my x-coordinate would be 4, and I'm going to write that as an ordered pair. So they intersect at 4, 0. Okay? Looking at our next example, do we have coefficients that are opposites? Not quite. They're close. If we look at our v's, they're both positive. Is there a way to make one of them negative? Yes. What would we have to do? Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter which equation we times by negative 1. I'm going to change the bottom one. Okay? So my top equation has not changed. I'm just rewriting it here so that I can look at my new system. The second equation becomes positive 2u minus 3v equaling positive 5. And now when I add them together, the v's will drop out. I end up with 5u equaling 20, which means u has to be 4. Okay. Plugging that back in. Again, it doesn't matter where you put it. You have to put it in for a u, but it doesn't matter which equation. I'm going to dump it into the top one. So I have 3 times 4 plus 3 times v equals 15. 3 times 4 is 12. If I subtract it to the other side, I'm left with 3 now, which means v would have to be 1. Okay, so my solution, u is 4, v is 1. Typically, if they are not x and y's, we put them in alphabetical order. All right, our next example requires a little more work because we don't have opposites, we don't have matching coefficients, so we're going to have to use multiplication to create opposites. If we try to eliminate the x's, can you visualize getting them to be a 15 and a negative 15? If we try to get rid of the y's, what would we have to turn them into? 14, 14 and negative 14, okay? So it really doesn't matter. We're going to have to multiply both equations. So pick one, x or y. I heard x. OK. Eliminating x's. We want one of them to be a positive 15 and one to be a negative 15. Doesn't matter which one. All right, just pick one. So let's say the top one I multiply by 5. That would create a 15. The next equation is going to have to be multiplied by a negative 3, right? Now, most common mistake is students don't multiply the whole equation. You need to make sure you've distributed it to all the pieces. So my new first equation becomes 15x plus 35y equaling 75. Okay. My second equation becomes negative 15x minus 6y equaling positive 12. Okay, when we add them together, our x's will drop out. How many y's do we have left? Okay, so we have 29y equaling 87. So if we divide, what do we get? Okay. Now, which equation do you want to dump that into? First one? Again, it doesn't matter. I'm going to dump it in there for y. So now I have 3x plus 7 times 3 would be 21. If I subtract 21 to the other side, I end up with negative 6, which means x then would have to be negative 2. Okay? So ordered pair, negative 2, comma, 3. All right, I'm going to pause the video. I want this side of the room. You check that ordered pair in the top equation. This side of the room, you check it in the bottom equation. All right, did it work? Yes? All right, let's move on. Our next example. What do you notice? Do we have opposite coefficients for x? Yep. Do we have opposite coefficients for y? Yep. So when we add these two equations together, what are we going to end up with on the left side? Zero. We get zero on the left side. Yes? The x's drop out, the y's drop out. We have nothing left over here. Looking at the right side, negative 5 plus 5 is also zero. So remember last week we talked about what happens if our variable disappears. We're trying to eliminate one of them, but what happens if they both disappear? Then we have to look at whether we have a true statement left or a false statement. 
Does zero equal zero? Yes. yes. That means every xy pair that I put in one equation is going to work in the other one. Okay? So if I were to graph these, what would I notice? Yeah. All the points on one are going to match the points on the other, right? They're the same line. It's just two different versions of it. Okay? So we have the same lines. We call those coinciding lines, which means we have an infinite number of solutions. Okay? Infinitely many solutions. Now, you do have to be careful. That doesn't mean I can just create any XY ordered pair and it's going to work. Okay? We're basically saying if you have an XY coordinate that works in one equation, it automatically has to work in the other equation. Okay? All right. What about in our next one? What happens on the left side? They all drop out again, but on the right side, remember we're adding these together. So X's disappear, Y's disappear. We have nothing on the left, but what do we have on the right? Now, does 0 equal, zero, uh, equal 16? No. no. If you get a false statement, that means there is never going to be a solution. So what kind of lines do we have that never have a point of intersection? Yes. Okay. All right, our last example. <laughs> Have to throw a word problem in there for you. It says a student has some $1 bills and some $5 bills in his wallet. He has a total of 11 bills that are worth $31. How many of each type of bill does he have? It is critical when you set up word problems that you identify what your variables are and you state that. If you don't state what your variables are, I can't tell if your equations are correct. Okay? So, if we start out, let's say x equals the number of $1 bills and y equals the number of $5 bills. Now it says, write your equations. What information are you being given? We have two types, right? They're giving me a total of 11 bills. They are giving me a total value of $31. Those two totals are going to be for each equation, right? One equation, we need the total to give us 11. And the second one, we need the total to give us 31, OK? How do we get a total of 11? Good, x plus y. We're simply adding the number of $1 bills and the number of $5 bills together to get 11 bills. In terms of the value, what equation could we set up? All right, $1 for every x, $5 for every y, total value of 31. Yes? That's our system. We need to solve that system simultaneously, OK? If we use our elimination method for today's focus, we need to get opposite coefficients. What makes sense to turn into an opposite? The x, right? Because we have one of each. So simply changing all the signs on one of our equations. If I change all of these, is that OK? I'm basically multiplying through by a negative 1. When I add them together, what do I end up with? Okay, 4y equals 20 which means y has to be 5, okay? We know that x plus y is 11, so if we substitute that in, x plus 5 has to be 11, which means x would have to be 6. When you have the context of a word problem like this, rather than give your answer as an ordered pair, I want you to explain your answer. So what did we say x stood for? $1 bills. So we have six $1 bills, and we have five $5 bills, correct? 
All right, questions on that elimination method? And again, tomorrow we will be focusing more on just setting up word problems and solving those, okay? All right, so here is your homework assignment. You have some class time. Make good use of it.